This is my favorite bit of the show. <laughs> this moment when you're all looking up at me and all of your faces, your little eyes thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> oh, this could be shit. <laughs> and it could, it could. I don't have it all figured out. <laughs> is anyone here in love? Yeah. There was a weird satellite delay on that, wasn't there? People didn't answer that immediately. That's frightening. I understand why love is difficult. Love is unkind. Love is scary. Love. Two people together, holding hands and touching hearts and bums. Two people sharing their lives together. Everything's nice and warm. But both of them think that they're putting more effort into the relationship. Is it love? Is it money? Is it the washing up? But how can two people put more than 50% into the same thing at the exact same time? That doesn't make mathematical sense, but then sex. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, that's important. I, uh, it's, it's, uh, love is important. I go out myself, I try and find love at the club. Do you guys know the club? I'd be surprised if you did, to be honest. I come from a small town in the middle of Ireland where the name of the club is Club. This is because we've only got the one back home. Why the fuck will we name it anything else? <laughs> we have a shop near where I'm from named Shop. And we have a funeral parlor called, oh no, you're dead. <laughs> I should be honest with you, Club isn't actually in my town. It's in the next town over. It's a 20 minute drive away. Has anyone here ever had to do a 20 minute drive in the car with your mother when you're pretending not to be drunk? It's a fucking tough drive, isn't it? 20 minutes in a car, there's only so long you can look not drunk as a drunk 17 year old by doing this. <laughs> After a while you have to look over and say something to a woman that raised you, you look over, you say, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, for what? You go for everything, like for the <laughs> She says, we're here, get out. <laughs> I go, mom, we're not here, we're about six miles away. She says, we're here. Get out of this fucking car. So I get out and I have to walk to the club. Six miles walking in the mud. I arrive and I arrive at the club. I'm all covered in bits of dirt and I'm sweaty and disheveled. And the bouncer looks like he might not let me in. Do you ever get any bouncer sass? Do you know what I'm talking about? Bit of Missy Elliott. Look at your head. Of course you get bouncer sass. Missy Elliott fucking like that. Like I don't like your shoes and I've written a rap about it. Serious shit, right? I don't get into the club much because this is not the head of club music. This is a head that my family describes as Stephen, would you not shave? You look like a homeless baby. My friends on the internet call this metrosexual viking, which I love because it's, ooh, pillage. My like Calvin Klein. I've been trying to figure out why I'm doing this lately when I'm trying to look sexy, and it's because men have limited options for what they can do with their hands when they're trying to look sexy. You can either go for fucking, ooh, dickhead, or fucking, ooh, dick hand. You settle on right here in the middle. Do you know why this one works? It's because women, 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 Love, value. Well, why would you go for the six pack when the keg's right here? That's for everybody, that's gonna keep everybody warm. That's nice for it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be fat. I went to the doctor, I'm on a diet. Is anyone here on a diet? Yeah. It's a sad fucking time. A diet is a fundamental part of your life where you have to go and basically it's you looking at your own body and saying, listen, mistakes have been made. But as the new administration moves forward, we're going to try and rectify some of these mistakes. Uh, we're going to take a look at the infrastructure which we think caused the problems in the first place. But one thing we're sure of, it wasn't us that caused this problem. It whoever was the fucking charge before. It's tough, you know, because Irish people are not good at self-betterment. Irish people in the room? That's solely drunken enthusiasm. American people in the room? They nearly made more noise than all of the Irish people in this room just from fucking believing in yourself. It's amazing out there. Americans, you guys have the secret. Do you know about the secret, America? Secret's a fucking amazing book. Oprah endorsed the secret. Secret's a fucking amazing book about following your dreams. Manifest your destiny. You want a Lamborghini? Cut out a picture of a Lamborghini, stick it on a corkboard. Every day you look at it like I deserve you. You want to marry Leonardo DiCaprio? You want to marry Leo? Want to marry Leonardo DiCaprio? Cut out a picture of Leo, stick him on the corkboard as well. Look at him every day, I deserve you. You wake up every day, you look at that corkboard, I deserve it, I can have anything I want. This is America, I can have it! It's amazing, they can fucking believe that they can manifest their destiny by wishing hard and looking at a photo. If you told Irish people that the only thing we need to do to manifest our destiny is to tell the universe what we want, our honest reaction would be, ah no, the universe, don't tell her anything now, keep that to yourself. 
Don't be having dreams now. They're not for you. Dreams are for Protestants now. They're not for you. Keep your head down now. No one will fucking look at you. You'll be all right. There's no kiss cam in Croke Park. In America, you guys have a kiss cam. You go around with a camera. People at a football stadium say, kiss each other. You're in love. And you go, yeah, I love my husband. Yeah. In Ireland, you could put a kiss cam on a fucking couple that's been married for 37 years. They've had 14 children. And you put a camera on them and go, kiss, tell everyone you love each other. And they go, this isn't a porno now. No, I'm fucking told. I didn't kiss her when I was giving her the children. I'm not gonna fucking kiss her now. It's tough. It's fucking tough out there. Can we be honest? In 2019, 2020, it's a fucking terrible time to be alive. So there's so much bullshit going on in the world and we're all finding weirder and weirder ways to get over it. Does anyone here watch pornography? One or two honest ghosts in the room and a lot of fucking silent liars out there and I don't like that, ladies and gentlemen. I understand why you don't want to admit it. It's tough. A lot of porn. The first bit is fine. First bit's nice in porn always, isn't it? Fucking first bit of porn, you see. Oh, classic. <laughs> that washing machine's been repaired by a licensed technician. That pizza's been delivered in a timely fashion. <laughs> no one has any cash on them. <laughs> I don't understand the barter system, but fuck it, I respect the culture and I'll watch for research purposes. It's the first bit of porn. It's always adorable. Then inevitably porn gets weird, doesn't it? Porn gets awful, porn gets very strange. I can see eyes in the room of people nodding, not letting their partners see that they're nodding at me. And you know that porn gets weird. After a while, porn gets too much. It's kind of fucking, oh God, that's when I heckle. I'm like, oh God, don't put that there. Oh God, you'll have to burn the bed. You'll have to burn the house. Don't invite more people. You have enough people. Don't be greedy. Don't be fucking greedy. So what I've done is to alleviate some of my stress is I've written some of my own pornography, which I, I'd like to um, share with you people now. Um, this is sort of like, it's not, it's not really like hardcore or anything. It's just kind of my fantasies of how I'd like sex stuff to be. So, so um, here we go. <clears throat> uh, se sexy um, love po poem, se sex story, hmm, pornography. <laughs> he saw her in the cafe and he smiled at her. She smiled back. And instead of leaving and never ever ever seeing him again, she walked over and said, oh, I'm very impressed with your smile. You seem like a good sex man. And I'd like to sex upon you today. I promise I'm not a crazy person, nor am I a scammer, and I'm especially not your cousin. <laughs> Small country, we have to be very careful. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds perfect, he said. And when he said the hard bit of perfect, not even a little bit of biscuit flew out of his mouth and hit her in the face or hair at all. That never happens to him because he's a cool guy. And then they held hands and left the cafe together. Along the way, she complimented his two third length pants and running shoes saying, "Ooh, those are very practical for this changeable weather we've been having. That's what I find super sexy about you. They got back to her place, which was close by and also on the ground floor. So no one got sweaty or tired going up any stairs. Had to get embarrassed about their physical fitness levels before the game began. And also he remembered not to call it the game. That's fucking horrible, <laughs> fucking, we will begin. <laughs> so she didn't have a housemate either. So they didn't have to do that weird housemate shuffle. Does anyone here live with people? Do you know when you arrive home with somebody and you're like, your housemate like, hey, and your housemate goes, yeah, sex. <laughs> and you go, no, no, could you fuck off? <laughs> could you fuck off, go see a film? Oh, you want me to film it? You're like, no, that's not, the fuck it's, that's not how cameras work anymore. Get out of here. So there they were, alone together. So he took his penis out and said, hey, look at this. And she went, whoa, good dick. I like seeing those. Yours looks lovely and not at all strange like that one woman said that one time. You should be confident about your penis. You should be confident. You should be confident. I like that your penis looks nice and not too big, so it looks perfect to fit in my relatively small vagina. Then they had a quick chat about how in life all vaginas are different sizes and shapes and elasticities, and that's okay, ladies, no one's judging anybody. There's a lot of weird pressure, though, on men in the media, so women never want to talk about that, do they? There's nothing on this. <laughs> and then it was time for sex. They'd done all of the kissing and nodding at one another, so the sex began. Here comes sex. Out of cinema! Oh, I'm so sorry for the film. No, no, it happened from time to time. No, I'm gonna swim in a room. No, I'm gonna swim in a room, bit man.
Loads of big sex in all the holes, his two. And she was a great kisser. And she just started coming immediately when he did stuff to her. It was like he was the chosen one. And all the townsfolk had gathered outside like, Ah, oh, Steve, chosen! <laughs> and then after a while they were done. And oh, what a sex it was. She says, that's the best sex I've ever had. And he knew she was telling the truth because she'd actually tripped and fallen into a polygraph machine. And then after a while, um, uh, they, they ordered some chicken with an app she had on her phone. It was amazing. You fucking, you, he didn't have to telephone a place after midnight. Do you ever have to call a place after midnight and they know you're up drinking and shagging? They just know. You're like, I always fuck it. I'm like, hello, how's it going? Is there a chicken there? Can I speak to him? Put the chicken on. She hit a button and a chicken flew in the window. It was amazing. There was a lad going by in a moped, just fucking Tom brady it in. It was glorious. Lying there in the biggest bed you've ever seen. emperor size bed. Fucking huge bed. No one had to lie in the wet spot. It's amazing. Both roll around as much as they want, no one got sticky. <laughs> then after a while they had even more sex. It was even bigger and better than the sex they had before. And everything was great. No one had weird feelings they didn't talk about straight away and none of their friends tried to ruin it. Do you ever have your friends try and ruin you hooking up with somebody by being like, what is this? What's going on over here? Because I've been married for four years and I'd love to ruin your fun. No one did that. Everything was great and no one had feelings and that's sex and that's wonderful and thank you very much.